BMW defined the original concept of the sports sedan. A quick, nimble, practical sports car. And nearly 40 years later, the 3 Series continues to lead the class. Your new 3 Series represents the fifth generation of this concept, which BMW continues to perfect with each new model. Your 3 Series is a pace setter in safety, quality, and of course, responsiveness. Designed to move you with more confidence and style than you've ever felt before. Advanced Security. Your new 3 Series is equipped with coated drive-away protection, one of the most technologically advanced anti-theft systems in the industry. Each key includes a tiny transponder which stores a random electronic code. Every time the vehicle is started, this code is changed. The next time, the vehicle can only be started if the key matches the new code. You will have received a set of keys consisting of two remote control master keys, a valet key, and a spare to be kept in a safe place. Never store any of these keys in the vehicle. The valet key may be used to open the doors and turn on the ignition, but it cannot be used to unlock the trunk or glove compartment. Before leaving the valet key with an attendant, insert the master key into the lock, make one quarter turn to the right, and withdraw the key in the horizontal position. When you unlock the door of your BMW with one of the remote control master keys, the key memory can reset the driver's seat and climate control to the positions they were in the last time that particular remote key was used. Each key's user can make several more choices, and your BMW center will enter these preferences into key memory. For example, having the vehicle lock automatically once it is in motion, and choosing to unlock all doors at once instead of just the driver's door first. Colored decals are provided to help you identify the remote keys. The vehicle memory allows you to store several more security preferences that apply, regardless of the key being used. If you prefer, you can have the daytime running lights come on whenever the ignition is started. And if your vehicle has an alarm system, you can have the siren chirp when the system is armed or disarmed. The choice is yours. You may also select pathway lighting from the vehicle memory. To activate, simply pull the headlamp flasher turn indicator stock toward you after turning off the vehicle. The headlights and interior lights come on for added security as you leave the vehicle and will turn off automatically after 40 seconds. The battery in the remote is recharged by the vehicle's ignition, so remember to use each remote control key at least once a year. There are three buttons on the remote, unlock, lock, and trunk. Depending on your key memory preferences, pressing the unlock button once will disarm the security system and either unlock all the doors and the trunk, or unlock only the driver's door and the fuel filler door. To unlock the rest of the doors and the trunk, press this button a second time. To lock the vehicle, press the BMW logo on the remote. If on a hot day you want to open the windows and moonroof before getting in, hold down the unlock button after unlocking the vehicle. In just a few seconds, the windows and moonroof will start to open. Continue to hold the button down. When the vehicle is locked, press the lock button to turn on the interior lights. This can help you locate your vehicle at night. If you have installed a BMW accessory alarm system, you can activate a panic alarm by pressing and holding down the trunk button. It's easy to deactivate by pressing the unlock button. Be sure to lock the vehicle again afterward. The alarm system includes a motion detector and a tilt sensor. If you wish to turn off these functions, press the lock button two times in succession. To unlock the driver's door with the key, insert the key fully into the lock and turn it once to the left. Turn one more time to the left to release the locks on all the other doors and the trunk. To lock the vehicle with the key, simply make one turn to the right. Turn one more time to the right to bypass the motion detector and tilt sensor. 
By turning the key clockwise and holding it in the lock, you can close the windows and moonroof from outside the vehicle. Great if you got out and forgot to close everything up. Never lock the vehicle with the key or remote if someone plans to stay in the vehicle. Anyone wanting to wait in the security of the locked vehicle should press the inside lock button located on the center console. The fuel filler door remains unlocked when this button is activated, so you may wait in the vehicle with a greater feeling of security while an attendant fills the gas tank. Press this button again to unlock all doors, or pull twice on the handle of a locked door to open that door only. The other doors will stay locked. To open the trunk, locate the trunk button on the remote. Press and release or press the trunk button on the left side of the driver's footwell, providing the trunk hasn't been locked separately to prevent access with the valet key. If the trunk is unlocked, push up on the rubber catch and lift the lid. If the vehicle is locked, using the trunk button on the remote or the release switch won't unlock the doors, and the trunk will lock again automatically when the lid is closed. If your vehicle has a built-in BMW Universal Transceiver, you may use the transceiver to conveniently replace up to three handheld transmitters for garage doors and gates. To program the transceiver, turn the ignition key to position 2. To clear the BMW Universal Transceiver, press and hold both outside buttons. When the indicator light flashes, release the buttons. Hold the handheld transmitter no more than two inches away from the BMW Universal Transceiver. Simultaneously, press the button on the handheld transmitter and the desired button on the BMW Universal Transceiver. When the indicator light flashes rapidly, release the buttons. Driving Comfort. The designers of your BMW were inspired by the 3 Series illustrious heritage. They met new design challenges while building on the 3 Series character and strengths. Well, our first concern, of course, is BMW is a driving car. So we want to keep this ergonomic flow, this sense of everything within its reach. You're active, you're proactive. I drive this car, I'm alive, I'm awake, you know, I use it. It's right there where I need it, but I'm in command. The interior is a stunning work of art and every aspect enhances your comfort, control, and driving pleasure. Well, one thing we really like about this interior is now we can really truly say all across the BMW range, all our cars have the same type of design quality level. The whole sense of the appointments of the car, how the leather is handled, how the instrument panel is handled, the wood options, etc., are at the same quality level as in a 5 or a 7 series. To adjust the manual seat, Pull the forward lever and slide the seat to the desired position. Pull the middle lever and raise or lower the height of the seat cushion. Pull the rearward lever and change the tilt of the backrest. With manual sport seats, you can also modify the tilt of the seat cushion by repeatedly pushing down or pulling up on the semicircular lever. Pull the lever under the front of the seat and adjust the thigh support. To modify the position of the power seat, locate the horizontal switch on the side of the seat. Pushing it forward moves the seat closer to the wheel. Pushing it toward the rear moves the seat further back. To change the height of the seat, lift with your fingers or push down with your thumb. The smaller button to the rear controls the angle of the seat back. Twist the button to recline the seat or to pull the seat back up straighter. With power sport seats, the rear of the large button controls the height of the seat. The front of the button controls the tilt of the cushion. Lift up to tilt away from the steering wheel. Push down to tilt toward the steering wheel. On the 3 Series convertible, pull up or push down on the small button to adjust the headrest. On other 3 Series models, manually adjust the height and tilt of the headrest, making sure that the center of the headrest is positioned at ear height. Press in the button at the base only if you find it necessary to lower the headrest to its lowest positions.
If your car's front seats are equipped with lumbar support, locate the round switch. Press the forward arrow for firmer support. Press the rear arrow for softer support. Press the upper arrow to move the lumbar support higher up the backrest, or press the lower arrow to move the lumbar support down. Using the switch on the driver's door, push to the left for the driver's side mirror, or to the right for the passenger side mirror. Move the four-way adjuster switch until the mirror is in the correct place. While the vehicle is in reverse gear, the right side mirror automatically tilts down to optimize rear vision, provided that this switch is in the driver's side mirror position. If the switch is pushed to the right, this function is turned off. To reduce glare from behind when driving at night, tilt the inside rear view mirror by turning the red dial underneath. If your car is equipped with the automatic dimming inside rear view mirror, the mirror will automatically darken to reduce glare at night. However, when you select reverse gear, the mirror will lighten up for better rear vision. There's a memory system to capture three comprehensive settings for the driver's seat and outside mirrors. To do this, make sure that the key in the ignition is turned to position 1 or 2. Press the red button located on the side of the seat. The button will light up. Then press button 1, 2, or 3. To recall your personal setting, with the driver's door open or the key in position 1, simply touch the desired button. Please do not program or select a memory position while the vehicle is moving. Your owner's manual has further information. To adjust the tilt telescopic steering wheel, first locate the lever under the steering column and push downward to unlock it. Adjust the wheel. Pull the lever back up to clamp the wheel in place. The temperature of the optional heated front seats can be varied for both driver and front passenger using the individual controls. Choose between high, medium, and low temperature. If you have a 3 Series sedan or coupe equipped with split folding rear seats, pull the lever located in the trunk to unlock the portion of the seat you wish to fold down. Then simply pull the rear backrest forward. To return the backrest to its upright position, lift until it clicks into place. To use the ski sack, pull down the rear armrest. Detach the Velcro flap and push down on the oval release button. Lower the cover and unfold the ski sack. Press up on the round button to open the cover in the trunk. In the 3 Series Coupe, lifting the handle on the side of the front seat allows the seat to move forward, providing easy access to the rear. To use one of the clothes hooks in the rear passenger compartment of the coupe, press on the upper edge to release the hook. In the convertible, press and hold the rocker switch on the side of either front seat to automatically slide the seat forward or back. Now lift the handle to tilt the seat out of the way. If you have a 3 Series sport wagon, you may load or unload small items by pressing the button below the rear wiper and tilting the window up. To open the tailgate, press up on the rubber catch. In the cargo area, there is a handy 12-volt utility plug. The cargo cover attaches to holders in the rear. To use the luggage net, pull it up and attach it to the holders in the roof. It is easiest to do this from the rear seat. To remove the net holder, press the side buttons and pull the case out. Press the release switch on the top of the seat to fold down one portion of the rear seat and perform the same operation on the other side to fold down the seats completely for maximum cargo space. To install the net in front of the rear seats, guide the case in from the passenger side with the strap facing up and the handle of the cargo cover facing front. Pull the net out and secure it to the holders in the roof. 
Use the rotary dial with red and blue markings to moderate the temperature of the airflow to your upper body. Turn toward blue for colder air or toward red for warmer air. Use the switch with red and blue arrows to select a comfortable interior temperature. When auto appears in the display, airflow is controlled automatically. You can use the switch marked with fans to vary the airflow. To turn off the system, lower the fan speed all the way and press. To turn the system back on, press any climate control switch. To defrost the windshield, simply press the defrost button. Below, you'll find the button for air conditioning. The bottom button on the right-hand column is for the rear window defogger. To direct airflow to the windshield, upper body, and the footwells, select any combination of the buttons on the left-hand column. Or press Auto and the system will select air distribution automatically. To help prevent windows from fogging in cool, damp weather, press the top button and air will be blown upward on both sides. To choose automatic air recirculation, press the air recirculation button once and the system will recirculate filtered interior air for up to 12 minutes if an excess level of outside pollutants is detected in the environment. Or press again to choose manual air recirculation. To avoid the possibility of fogging the windshield in damp weather, press the air conditioning button if either air recirculation function is selected. Controls. At BMW's Research and Development Center, engineers, ergonomics specialists, and safety experts aim to exceed the highest standards for safety, performance, and reliability. In this example, if a taillight burns out, a backup bulb comes on immediately for safety's sake. A warning light in the instrument cluster reminds you to get a replacement. As soon as the old bulb has been changed, the backup bulb turns off again. All systems, parts, and controls in your vehicle undergo extensive durability testing. The chassis has to endure hundreds of hours of torturous shaking. This axle is driving every corner and straightaway of the awesome Nürburgring racetrack at racing speeds. And these components can withstand vibration, heat, and cold beyond anything you are likely to encounter in the real world. If your vehicle has a Steptronic transmission, you have a choice of three driving modes, Adaptive Automatic, Sport, or Clutchless Manual. Select D for Adaptive Transmission Control, and this advanced system will electronically sense your driving style and driving situation, and respond with either sporty upshifting or more conservative upshifting. Move the lever into the MS area of the shift gate to select the sport program, which shifts at higher RPMs and will only shift up as far as fourth gear. As soon as you move the lever in the plus or minus direction, you engage manual mode. Move the selector in the plus direction to shift up through all five gears. Move it in the minus direction to shift down. To operate the power moonroof, locate the overhead button. One firm tap toward the rear will open the roof all the way. Tap once on the middle of the button when the roof is open to go to the tilt position. One firm tap toward the front will close the roof. When the roof is closed, press the middle button and the rear of the roof will tilt to enhance ventilation. The compartment in the trunk for storing the convertible top is flexible, allowing you to increase luggage space when the top is up. To lower the top, first make sure that the storage compartment is fully extended. To do this, flip the handle down and pull it out toward you, letting the compartment drop down to its extended position. To lower the automatic top, make sure the car is stationary and locate the top-down switch on the center console. Press and hold the button. The windows will lower slightly. The red light in the button will glow steadily until the operation is complete. 
If you remove your finger from the switch, the light will flash, indicating the operation has been interrupted. A yellow light will be illuminated if it is impossible to lower the top, such as when the compartment for storing the roof in the trunk hasn't been fully extended. To close the top, press and hold the top up button. Continue pressing after the red light has gone off and the windows will be raised automatically. It is also possible to lower and raise the top with the key in the driver's door lock. To fully close or open any one of the car's windows with one touch, pull up or press down on the window switches firmly. To partially close or open a window, pull up or press down on the switch lightly and keep your finger on the switch. Please use the rectangular switch to deactivate the rear power window switches whenever small children are riding in the car. After the vehicle has been turned off, windows can be operated for up to 15 minutes until one of the front doors is opened. In the coupe, you must keep your finger on the switch in order to close the rear vent window. Ensure the window area is clear before closing or opening a window. In the convertible, you can use the all window switch to lower all windows with one touch. To raise the windows with this button, keep your finger on the switch. From ignition key position 1 on up, you can retrieve information from the onboard computer by repeatedly pressing the button on the turn signal stalk. The instrument cluster readout will display the time, outside temperature, average fuel consumption, fuel range, and average speed. To recalculate the averages, press and hold the button. To change the clock, first scroll through the onboard computer functions to the clock. Then turn the right hand knob on the instrument cluster to the right and hold to set the clock ahead. Turn it to the left to set it back. At first the numbers will change slowly, then they speed up. Press the knob if you wish to change the display mode from 12 hours to 24 hours. To use an optional integrated cellular phone, Press the RT button on the left side of the steering wheel until telephone numbers appear in the display. Use the search buttons marked with arrows to scroll through the names and numbers you've stored. Once you've found the number, press the call button to begin your hands-free call. To raise or lower the volume, press the plus and minus switches on the left side of the steering wheel. To end the call, press the call button again. When listening to the audio system, you can use the plus and minus switches on the left side of the steering wheel to adjust the volume. Press the arrow buttons once to search up or down. The right side of the multifunction steering wheel is devoted to cruise control. To set the cruise control once you've reached a speed of approximately 20 miles per hour, first turn on the system by pressing the concave button marked 1-0. This symbol will light up in the display. Now tap the plus button once to register your speed. Each successive tap on the plus sign will increase your speed by 0.6 miles per hour. And holding the button down will increase speed steadily. Tapping the minus button reduces speed in 0.6 miles per hour segments. And holding the button down decreases speed steadily. To interrupt cruise control, tap the 1-0 button. When you're ready to resume, tap the button with the cruise control symbol. Cruise control will be interrupted automatically when you apply the brakes, depress the clutch, shift into neutral, or your speed increases by 10 miles per hour for more than 30 seconds. When cruise control has been interrupted, pressing the 1-0 button will fully turn off the cruise control. You'll find the windshield wiper controls on a stock on the right side of the steering wheel. Push up one notch for intermittent wiping action or to activate the rain sensor. The rain sensor employs an infrared LED to measure rainfall hitting the windshield. To change the intermittent wiping interval or the sensitivity of the rain sensor, turn the wheel embedded in the stock. In vehicles without a rain sensor, the speed of the wipers will step back a level as the vehicle comes to a rest.
Move the stock up one more notch for steady wiping action at a normal speed. Move up one more notch and the wiping frequency increases to fast. For just a quick swipe of the windshield, press the stock down and release. The selector switch for parking lights and headlights is located to the left of the steering wheel. If your vehicle is equipped with automatic headlight control, move the selector switch to the left and the system will automatically turn on or off the low beams in response to changes in ambient light levels. Your BMW Center can program the vehicle memory so that daytime running lights will come on whenever the vehicle is started and go off automatically when the vehicle is switched off. To the right of the selector switch is the rheostat, which controls the illumination intensity of the instrument cluster displays. The fog light switch is below the rheostat. Press this button when the low beams or parking lights are on to make the fog lights come on. The fog lights will turn off automatically when the high beams are switched on. To turn on or off one of the interior lights, press the button briefly. Press and hold for more than three seconds if you want the light to remain off continuously. Fifteen minutes after the ignition key has been turned to the off position, all interior lights are switched off automatically. Navigation system. Despite its vast array of functions, the navigation system is very easy to use. Turning the round control knob moves the cursor. Moving the cursor over an item highlights the item, and pressing the knob selects the item. To use the BMW onboard navigation system, select GPS navigation from the menu. Read this warning carefully. Use this system only when traffic and environmental conditions permit. Pay attention to traffic laws and situations. Safe vehicle operation is the driver's responsibility. Always wear your safety belt. Press the knob to accept. To establish your preferred settings, press the menu button and select Settings. Use the control knob to make your selections. At Screen, choose between Split Screen or Full Screen Display Modes. With the split screen mode, your current location appears on the right when the onboard computer display and the audio display appear on the left side of the screen. Use clock to set the clock. Use date to choose between two date formats and to set the date. Use nav volume to make navigation instructions louder or softer. Use color set to choose between two different background colors. You may also specify language and units of measurement for distance, fuel consumption, and temperature for the onboard computer display. To set the time, select Clock. Press Set. The time will appear in the display. Turn the knob to adjust the time, then press to confirm. For guidance to your destination, begin by entering an address into the system. First, press the knob to select City. An alphanumeric display will appear. Turn the knob to spell the city, pressing after each letter you select. 